if someone had an enlarged prostate, is there any <coughs> concern about having too much caffeine in diet? Caffeine is a diuretic, and it makes you urinate a little bit. If you have prostatitis, it's an irritative to the prostate, so it will make you give you the stinging and the burning sensation of urination. Caffeine is not that going to cause your prostatitis if you have an infection. The infection of the prostate most of the time is due to an enlarged prostate or it has to do with the wife that has vaginitis. If you have intercourse and the wife has an irritation or an infection in the vagina, you will definitely get an infection in the prostate. Studies have been shown that if you put some contrast material, which is some kind of a dye, in the vagina, after one minute of intercourse, that contrast is in both bladders, the men and the women. Okay, is there any drugs that people would take that could make it worse? Yes. Most of the time, it's something that people don't think that much of, of taking, which is cold medicine. The cold medicine is an alpha stimulant, anything that contains Sudafed or phenylephrine, which are usually nasal decongestions. A lot of people go into urinary retention after taking this kind of medication because it's like having a rubber band tied around your penis and trying to urinate with it. So that, that's one. So if somebody else? has an enlarged prostate, usually there's a warning on those bottles. It tells you that if you have an enlarged prostate, do not take this medication. Is there any other medicines in a particular group that you'd be concerned about, sir? Uh, about causing urinary retention? To make it more difficult to handle a, a, a Usually the... The one medication that is, is in, in this type of a concern also is the beta blocker. And the beta blocker is medication that is used for hypertension and for arrhythmias, What's which is a very common thing. So in other words, this medication will tighten up the urethra and will make it more difficult for somebody to urinate. However, it's not the sole cause of that. So if you're careful about the medicine, what you eat in your diet and drinking, most of the time you can get through this problem <coughs> for a certain period of time. Is that true? You certainly can. And there, if you go to a urologist, the urologist is going to evaluate you. It's going to make sure, first of all, that you do not have cancer of the prostate. Very important to do a PSA. PSA is recommended between the ages of 50 and 69. And you've got to make sure that the PSA is within normal limits. It stands for prostatic specific antigen. Being elevated doesn't mean you have cancer but it means you have some concern to look into, is that correct? That is correct. And having it's a normal more, PSA doesn't always rule it out either, does it? Correct. But the higher the figure... 30% of the people that have cancer of the prostate will have a PSA below 3. So that by itself will not indicate whether or not somebody has cancer of the prostate. But it helps. It helps. But it helps because it's, it's, one, it's the best test that is available today to find out whether or not you have to be screened for this. What age would you think a man should start getting that kind of test? They have to be tested from the ages of 50 to the ages of 70. How often should you get it? <clears throat> Once a year, you should have a digital rectal exam just to feel for unevenness and hardness in the prostate and a PSA. However, if you're African American, if you have a history, anybody in your family of cancer of the prostate in your father or in your brother that is a sibling, that makes you a higher risk. Or any one of the women in your family, a mother or a sister that might have developed cancer of the breast. Cancer of the breast is very similar to cancer of the prostate and usually it will make you a higher risk to develop cancer of the prostate if your mother or your sister had it. But you said 70, you stopped doing it at 70? They recommend, usually by the AUA, to stop at 70. That's the recommendation of the AUA guidelines. We still should be checking. And the reason why is because it's a very slow-growing type of cancer. So since the life expectancy of a normal male is about 76, so if you're at 70 and it takes you 10 to 15 years to die from cancer of the prostate, eventually you'll die first before you develop a spread of the disease. So therefore, they recommend not to do it. However, most of the urologists will test for PSA at any age. Because I think, and I'm a firm believer, that somebody should be given the option to get treatment or not get treatment, since there are many options to treat cancer of the prostate. Well, I don't plan to die at 76. I plan right. to die at 176, so right. why should be checked? The older you get, the higher your life expectancy is. So anybody at the age of 76 has another six to eight years to live. So if you get to 76, 
we may test you also if you have an agile or if you have some difficulty in urinating. And some of these people are going to a needle biopsy on the prostate to demonstrate whether or not you have the cancer. Because you may be suspicion of a carcinoma of the prostate, but the only thing that is going to prove to you is that you have a tissue diagnosis. That means somebody needs a biopsy on the prostate to make sure that that piece of tissue that is felt there and that hardness in the prostate is not a stone in the prostate, not a chronic infection, but it is cancer.